assalamu alaikum everyone this is dr manur bangash welcome to my youtube channel hope you guys are doing well the topic of this video is secondary active transport but before going to the discussion of this main topic i'll just briefly revise primary active transport so that we know the major difference between these two primary active transport is defined as movement of molecules or ions across the cell membrane in combination with carrier protein against the concentration gradient using energy derived directly from the breakdown of adenosine triphosphate or the ATP secondary active transport it is defined as the movement of molecules and ions across the cell membrane in combination with the carrier proteins against the concentration gradient using energy derived secondarily from energy that has been stored in the form of ionic concentration difference or potential difference of the molecules or ions between two sides of the membrane created originally by the primary active transport the characteristics or properties of secondary active transport are that it involves movement of molecules and ions across the cell membrane but for that they need to be combined with a carrier protein so it means that secondary active transport is carrier mediated and these molecules and ions are moved against the concentration gradient from low concentration to high concentration the the fourth and fifth points now they are very important because they differentiates secondary active transport from primary active transport in secondary active transport the molecules or ions they have coupled movement which means that two different types of molecules or ions will be moving across the membrane at the same time but their direction may vary either they'll be moving in the same direction or in different direction and the fifth and last characteristic is that for secondary active transport energy for the movement is derived from concentration or the potential difference that is created across the cell membrane whereas in primary active transport this energy was derived from the direct breakdown of ATP so now we'll see how the primary active transport of one type of molecule or ion leads to or cause the secondary active transport of a different type of molecule or an ion these let's say are positively charged ions and they have been transported against the concentration gradient by primary active transport from inside to outside the cell and due to this primary active transport they will be called primary molecules and their transport creates a concentration difference higher outside and low inside the cell and since they have a charge on them so a potential difference will also be created and that potential difference or concentration difference acts as a storehouse of energy and that energy basically helps in the transport of another molecule or ion which we'll call the secondary ions these primary ions 
because of this concentration difference created due to primary active transport now have the tendency to move down the concentration gradient from high concentration to the low concentration and when they are moving down the concentration gradient the these primary ions will move secondary ions along with themselves but against their concentration gradient and energy for the movement of these secondary ions is provided by the concentration or potential difference of these primary ions and the direction of movement of these secondary ions will be either similar to that of the primary ion or different than that of the primary ion this direction of movement of secondary ions or molecules depend on their depend upon their concentration difference and they will be moving against their concentration gradient unlike the primary ions or molecules that are moving down their concentration gradient secondary transporters they are the transmembrane proteins that aid in secondary active transport they does not break down atp molecules directly to get the energy for the transport but they move molecules or ions against the concentration gradient using electrochemical gradient of one molecule to move another molecule these secondary transporters are of two types symporters and antiporters symporters are the transmembrane proteins that use spontaneous flow of one molecule or ion to move a different molecule or ion in same direction against its concentration gradient antiporters are the transmembrane proteins that use electrochemical gradient of one molecule to move a second molecule in opposite direction against its concentration gradient this green thing that we can see here these are the transmembrane proteins this is a symporter why because the two different types of molecules or ions the pink or the blue ones they're different they're moving in same direction across the cell membrane whereas this one is an antiporter why because the molecules or ions the two different type of molecules or ions they're moving in different direction from each other across the cell membrane Okay, so we have two different types of secondary active transport co-transport or symport counter transport or the antiport symporters are involved in co-transport whereas antiporters are involved in counter transport Co-transport or symport is a type of secondary active transport in which the active transport or primary active transport of one solute will indirectly drive the transport of another solute against its concentration gradient but in same direction. This diagram shows symport and co-transport in which two different types of molecules or ions are moving in same direction across the cell membrane the transport of glucose or amino acids into the cell occurs by co-transport with the sodium ions and it's a very important mechanism for the 
movement of glucose or amino acids in renal cells intestinal and epithelial cells okay, this diagram shows lipid bilayer and this transmembrane protein which aids in the transport of sodium ion and glucose or amino acids and they have two binding sites here one for sodium and one for glucose here or in case of amino acid there will be a binding site for amino acids here sodium ion here is the primary ion because it is transported by prime reactive transport and glucose or amino acids are the secondary molecules if the concentration of sodium ions is higher on the outside and low inside the cell creating a concentration or a potential difference across the membrane and this concentration difference of the primary ion which is sodium provides energy for the transport of the secondary molecule which will be sodium sorry which will be glucose or amino acid okay so when sodium ion and glucose or amino acid they bind to their binding sites conformational changes will occur in this protein resulting in transport of sodium ion down its concentration gradient into the cell and glucose or amino acid against their concentration gradient into the cell okay since both sodium and glucose or amino acids are transported together or at the same time which is a property of secondary active transport called coupling and both sodium and glucose they are moving in same direction so which shows that it is a co-transport counter transport or anti port is a type of secondary active transport in which the primary active transport of one solute will indirectly drive the transport of another solute against its concentration gradient but in opposite direction this diagram shows anti porter and counter transport or anti port because two different types of molecules or ions they're moving in opposite direction across the cell membrane calcium and hydrogen ions are transported out of the cell by the process of counter transport with sodium ions okay calcium and hydrogen ions they transported by the same mechanism but proteins for them are different sodium ions here are the primary ions because they are transported by primary active transport resulting in their increased concentration outside the cell and decreased concentration inside the cell this primary active transport of sodium ions creates a concentration or a potential difference now because of this concentration difference sodium ions will try to move back into the cell and when it's doing that it will it will drag or it will kind of move other molecules or ions along with itself which are the secondary ions and in this case the secondary ions are calcium and hydrogen ions so in order to move inside the cell sodium ions will bind to its receptor site which is on the outside of the cell membrane whereas calcium ion and hydrogen ions will bind to their receptor sites which are on the inside of the membrane when these ions bind to the receptor sites conformational changes occur in the proteins resulting in transport 
of sodium ions into the cell and calcium and hydrogen ions outside the cell whereas energy for the transport of these secondary ions is provided by the concentration difference of the sodium ions so and these sodium ions calcium and hydrogen ion will um, will be transported at the same time which is called coupling and the primary and the secondary ions they are moving in opposite direction as shown by these arrows which means that it is a counter transport now we'll see the action of cardiac glycosides or more specifically digitalis on the cardiac cells in cardiac cells we have two types of pumps one is the sodium potassium pump which we know that um, functions by primary active transport and second is the sodium calcium exchanger which works by secondary active transport we know that sodium potassium pump it transports two sodium outside and one potassium inside whereas the sodium calcium exchanger or pump it transports calcium ions outside and sodium ions into the cell okay digitalis <clears throat> it acts on the sodium potassium pump of the cardiac cells and block this pump due to this blockage of the pump what will happen that sodium will sodium cannot move out of the cell and potassium ions cannot move into the cell this will result in increased concentration of sodium ions inside the cell the increased sodium concentration inside the cell will result in blockage of the sodium calcium pump now when this pump stops working sodium cannot enter the cell whereas calcium ions cannot move out of the cell as a result of this calcium ions will accumulate inside the cell and more calcium will be now available to bind with the troponin c resulting in increased contractility of the heart so this was how these pumps are affected by the glycoside the cardiac glycosides which eventually results in the improved function of heart so this was all about the secondary active transport if you like this video please don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe my channel So thank you for the office and take care